So today we are going to have a look at another budget-oriented all-in-one, the Acer Blizzard 120. So what we have here is the Acer Blizzard 120, and at that point already a big thank you to Acer for providing us one of these. Now if you see this, you may be wondering why mine doesn't look like the one you found online, and that has a very good reason. Very recently, Acer decided to update their Blizzard cooling lineup, but instead of just slapping a V2 on there, they just re-released it under the same name, and even the same model number. Okay, so to get a few things out, no, the Acer logo on the water block is not the only change that they've made. But to sum it up, the new version uses Hurricane 3 fans instead of the 2s, even though they are not even released on their own, and it has some sort of updated pump with a bit more pressure and flow. But that being said, everything else except these two little things is exactly the same. So let's just pretend that I have the new nice looking Acer logo on here, and have a look at the features. The Asa Blizzard 120 is a 120mm all-in-one that comes with a Blizzard 2 or 3 fan that runs at 1800rpm with 49.1 CFM, 1.92mm of H2O, yet at 26.29 dBs and can be controlled over a 4-pin PVM header. The unnamed pump is able to push 1.5 liters per minute while yelling at 27.3 dB. To get the pump rolling, it uses a 3-pin fan header. The 321mm long tubes are sleeved and adjustable at the water block. With addressable RGB LEDs, both the fans and the water block are able to light up in whatever color you want. Asa even made sure to be as unproprietary as possible by hooking everything up with the standard 3-pin addressable header. Additionally, the fans and pump RGB wires are equipped with a splitter in order to daisy chain the RGB from one device to another. Of course, everything is compatible with the usual motherboard softwares. To get the best cooling possible, the cold plate comes with a big copper block. And even though there is no thermal paste pre-applied, we can find a syringe inside of the box. For those who do not have an RGB port on the mainboard, Acer made sure to include a little wired remote that can be hooked up to either the pump or the fan, as well as SATA for power, so all of you are good to go. In terms of compatibility, the Blizzard 120 is compatible with every relevant Intel socket, including the newest LGA1200. For Team Red, we get the same service with the newest AM4 going back until AM2. That should be it for the features. Now, on the installation part, it's pretty easy. Inside of the box, you will get separate bags for each platform. Sounds pretty easy. For Intel, just mount the backplate, then screw in these little holders on the bottom of the water block, and then just... and then just screw it down. But on the AMD side, I'm quite happy. Either managed to keep both the original backplate as well as the plastic things on top. The only thing that you gotta do is screw in these little AMD holders, again placed from the top, and then screw it in from the bottom. And then you can use these little brackets with a thumb screw in order to mount everything down on the socket. Now, as happy as I initially was with the whole setup, I have to say, I don't trust it. Note that it broke or anything, but once you screw in the thumb screws, you'll bend these metal plates almost all the way down. That does not look very trustworthy to me. And even though they bend right back once you release it, I would still bet that your amount of installations is, is very limited. Okay, that being said, let's put it in the system.
Okay, the installation was as easy as expected. I love the fact that I was able to reuse the original AMD brackets, though I really wouldn't trust them. And the daisy chain RGB was, it was useful when dealing with multiple devices. On the design side, it looks... Well, let's be honest, the fan is nice, but the water bar just looks bad. So let's get back to pretending that this is the newer version. And at that point, it, it looks okay. The RGB is simpler, the, the logo update was long overdue, and everything just looks cleaner. But what about performance? We've tested it on a test bench with a Ryzen 3700X locked at 4.5 GHz and 1.4 volts on the V-Core. The noise level was not bad at all, placing the Blizzard 120 somewhat behind the Kraken M22. When it comes to the temperature, 84 degrees C is very far from what I have hoped. The fan isn't bad, but with 1800 RPM, 1.79 mm of H2O and 43.06 CFM, it's more of a case fan than a radiator fan. But that is why we normalize these tests. With our Arctic P12 instead of those hurricanes, we were able to drop the temperature by 2 degrees down to 82 degrees C. With two P12 sandwich and a push-pull configuration, we dropped another 2 degrees C down to 80. So looking at the complete result, it's still bad. It's still very, very bad. For all of our 120s that we have, the Blizzard 120 marks the last spot. And with our normalized P12s, we can see that the fan was not the only issue here. With the NZXT Kraken M22 and 2 P12s, the temps got down to 75 degrees C. So either the pump, the cold plate or the radiator is bad. Or all of them. Anyway, all in all, I would not recommend getting it. Sure, the RGB looks nice, having a remote as a backup too, and I even gave it a plus for using the original AMD backup. But can somebody explain to me why the logo isn't aligned with anything, why the mounting hardware looks like it would break any second, why the tubes are way too short for a big case, why they feel so cheap, and... and why does my water block start to rave as soon as Aosrock Polychrome is involved? And why the hell did anybody think that these levels of performance are acceptable? And even if you take the price tag into account, it doesn't get any better. With $70 or something in the mid 60 euros, it is at the top of my price list for budget all in ones, yet it is the worst. So no matter how much I hope that this will work, it just doesn't. And the reason why I do not specifically say that the older model is bad is, let's just say, if you know how the pump, fans and radiator perform, perform in the newer version, you can kind of backtrack it to the smaller one. And let's just say, even with one or two degrees less, it would still end up being a really bad cooler. So all in all, don't buy it. Get something else, like, like the Cooler Master ML120L. It's five bucks less, comes with the same features, but it can cool. But let's not demoralize ourselves, because right now I can start filming how much of a performance boost you can expect if you switch from a 120 to a bigger model, or even to a bigger model. So stay tuned for that, and make sure to be subscribed to not miss it.